Item B, adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute the railroad construction and maintenance agreement for the San Bernardino Great Separation Project between the Peninsula Corridor Joint Powers Board and the City of San Bruno. Staff, please. May Honorable Mayor, Council Members, good evening. The action before you tonight is to authorize the city man manager to sign a construction and maintenance agreement with JPB for the Great Separation Project. This project is under development for the last decade. A major safety improvement that also part of the overall vision of the city uh, in the transit corridor. In October of 2009, oh, thank you. in October 2009, the council approved uh, a MOU finalizing our policies and proce uh, procedural framework for the development of this project. <coughs> This construction and maintenance agreement further defines responsibilities between the city and JPB for after construction maintenance responsibilities and construction during uh, and coordination during construction. I will uh, highlight a few aspects of this agreement. You had attached to uh, your package the full uh, copy of uh, the agreement, and I will, uh, in, my intention is only just uh, highlight uh, a few aspects of this agreement. JPB will be and is responsible for the cost of construction. The city will provide only staff and technical support to represent the city's interest during design and during construction. The phasing of the project will depend on the high-speed rail. This phase will build the western two tracks and the next phase, the eastern two tracks. JPB will consult the city for design changes if those will become necessary during construction. The, term around, uh, the turnaround time for these uh, responses on the city's time, uh, on the city side, is very short. The city will need to, uh, to accommodate a 14 days uh, response window. Recognizing the impact that this construction will have on the whole community and specifically on the eastern neighborhoods, will be a 24-hour contact number available to the public to comment, ask questions, to, res uh, to respond uh, on, uh, to make any recommendation uh, with a commitment on JPB's part to have a, respond, a response back in one business day. Also, as part of this uh, uh, public outreach process agreed uh, between JPB and the city, will be an ongoing feedback process uh, to the city indicating how those concerns were addressed. JPB will be responsible for, will be sole responsible for the quality of the project communicating with the public and minimizing the construction impact as noise, vibration, and, tra uh, and traffic during the construction. The city will have a general oversight role representing the city in interest during construction, exactly how the city represented the city interest uh, during the design phase. The contractor will have to comply with the city noise ordinance and activities with uh, the highest impact on residents, such as pile driving, will be performed only between 9 o'clock and 5 p.m. I will uh, emphasize uh, that this is a major construction project with a cons uh, considerable impact 
on neighborhood and on the whole city. And the le length of this construction uh, will be two years. Uh, is the expectation at this present time that the construction will start in October. And uh, this phase of uh, this project uh, will be done in uh, an estimated time of uh, two years. After the construction is done, uh, the city will maintain all of the city streets, lights, all of the landscape area, the Posey Park, the Sylvan Avenue, pedestrian and underpass, and uh, JPB will be responsible for maintaining everything in their uh, right, right of way. F is not called out specifically uh, in the agreement. It is one remaining item not included in this agreement, uh, the development of an archway as recommended and agreed by uh, the CAC uh, as part of the development of this project uh, on architectural element of this project envisioned as a critical feature to this project. It is a separate MOU under final, develop, uh, final development between us and JPB to memorialize our joint commitment to implement feasible alternative on the east side of this project with the next phase or sooner if the next phase will uh, be uncertain. Um, I am uh, here to answer any question that you might have. Also, uh, Mark Simon and Rafael Bolon from JPB, they are here uh, to answer any of your questions that you might have. Any questions of staff at this time? Uh, I think we do have a couple questions for you, Mark. First of all, I want to reassure the public that uh, Councilmember Ibera and I have met a number of times with JPB, and one of the uh, main focuses of our discussions were the public outreach process. And we made it really clear that we need a line of communication for any complaints. This is going to be a disruptive project for two years. It's going to be digging and dirt and noise and everything. We've tried to fine tune as best we could the hours of working. And if there are any complaints, uh, we want them uh, you know, received uh, within a 24-hour period or, or, or uh, responded to within a 24-hour period. And you will have a couple of point people right there uh, so that they're always available for uh, for city staff and city staff has your as your numbers available 24 hours a day so I just want to re reassure the public that we really tried to make every effort that we could at this point in time because this is sort of a moving target um, to reassure them that you know we're trying to take do their have their best interests in, in, in mind also uh, can you give us a little bit of um, it's it's hard to it's hard we, we have the high-speed rail and high-speed rail says that this project is already in place. Tell us a little bit about some of this confusion and going forward, how we're to look at this project. Two track, four track, high speed rail, where does it stand? Is it coming through? You don't know yet, but is it gonna be two or three or five years after the fact? Where, where are we in that whole mix? Well, of course, I, um, first of all, I wanna confirm that your city staff does have my number um, in more ways than one. Uh, <laughs> Of course, I can't speak for high-speed rail, and one of the difficulties, although Calhoun is in partnership with high-speed rail under the Peninsula Rail Program to advance projects to improve Caltrain and high-speed rail projects that have common utility, um, when it comes to their precise plans or the progress of their environmental review process, I'm not really in a position to speak for them. Having said that, uh, the EIR calls for a time frame of eight to ten years for high-speed rail to make its final decision, obviously sooner than that, but to really be under construction, if not finalized by then. My, in, my sense is, from our conversations with the people at High Speed Rail, that they have every intention of coming through San Bruno and adding the second set of tracks. Our position is, um, and this position is sometimes misrepresented, in fact, by residents of this very community, but our position is uh, that Caltrain owns and operates the railroad in trust for the people we serve and the communities we serve. And any, any efforts by High Speed Rail on the Caltrain right-of-way are going to be done in a way that enhances Caltrain 
and answers the concerns and, and desires of the communities that we serve. It's our expectation, and there's no reason to think otherwise, that high-speed rail will be coming through San Bruno on a, a raised track of the kind we're building now. There are a whole bunch of engineering reasons why we can't do much else than that, uh, but we think that we've, uh, through the lengthy negotiation, lengthy isn't really the right word, through the, the complicated and uh, complex negotiations with the city staff, we think we've arrived at a project that is going to make something uh, look good for the city of San Bruno. It's going to be effective for what Caltrain needs. It's going to be a significant safety enhancement, which is our first concern. I don't know if this is answering your question, but the fact is we can't predict what high-speed rail is going to do. That's one of the reasons that the agreements we have try to build into it what happens if high-speed rail doesn't come. I believe it's going to come. I believe it's going to come within the time frame described in their EIR, if not sooner. Uh, and we're building it with that in mind. We're building it with the expectation that it will have as its basis the ability for high-speed rail to expand an additional two tracks. And in fact, we're seeking federal funding for high-speed rail money to help pay for a portion of the portion of this project that has utility for high-speed rail. Okay. Hey, city Manager, you got a question or comment? If I, w I wanted to elaborate on that just a little bit, Mark, and just make sure that we're all understanding the same thing. The the um, if you talk to high-speed rail people and their presentations. I know you're aware of this, identifies the San Bruno situation compared to others up and down this corridor as a grade separated situation as the existing condition. So that is true. However, the grade separation, the grade separated structure may not be fully finished um, when high speed rail comes. So how uh, can you tell us a little bit about the partnership between yourselves, J the JPB, and the high-speed rail folks to bridge that gulf uh, f that, that, that they're not understanding something different, that, they're, th that they understand there's work that needs to be done by them or is expected to be done by them as part of making sure that we have a fully finished functional and aesthetically pleasing grade separation. I think a lot of what we're talking about has to do with the nature of the EIR and the alternatives analysis process that high-speed rail has to go through. They have to begin by not <laughs> precluding any option. And then as they gather information for the basis of their decision, they begin to narrow those options. They've done one round of that, and that's the round I think we're referring to that indicates San Bruno would be an elevated, grade separated structure as a completed part of the project. I would, I would, from what I understand from the conversations I've had with our own staff who were working part-time for us and part-time for high-speed rail, the next round of cuts on the alternatives analysis, which should be discussed at the August 5th meeting of the uh, high-speed rail authority, will further refine that. What it should show is what we expect, which is that San Bruno will be a four-track, grade-separated railroad under the construction of high-speed rail and Caltrain in partnership as the Peninsula Rail Program. There's no reason to expect otherwise, but what I can tell you, and I can't emphasize this strongly enough, is that's the commitment we made. That's the, that's the design that we've approved, is one that is essentially expandable to four tracks for high-speed rail. That's our understanding as the owners and operators and holders and trust of this right-of-way. That's the commitment we make to you. So, as this process unfolds, more information becomes available. Some of us want to jump ahead to the end and see how it's all going to turn out or anticipate how it might not turn out so that we can build into it certainties that it won't turn out that way. But I think that part of the problem that we all face here on the peninsula, one of the frustrations is high-speed rail sort of has to walk through its process step by step, and it has to act as though it has no idea how it's going to turn out at the end. If they do that, the whole EIR can be effectively challenged and tossed out. So they have to act as though there, there's a constant sort of wall. This is all we can say right now up to this point, and we can lead ourselves to the next point. It's not hard to anticipate in many cases along the peninsula where they're going to end up. There are portions that we know can't be, where the road right of way can't be expanded to accommodate four tracks. So they have to find an alternative to that. They can't skip ahead, even though we can. But the fact remains, we're building a two-track two grade separation that has utility and is expandable to four-track. It is our expectation that that's what's going to happen. 
Any other questions of uh, staff or of uh, JPB representatives? Let me just last try, Baron. Mark, so for the viewers, for the public, two-year project, what do you anticipate it's going to look like in two years? Uh, <laughs> It'll be beautiful. I'll be glad you did it. <laughs> You're being uh, it'll recorded. Be, it'll be I should add, one of the things that was at the heart of this whole plan was that we would be finishing with this portion around the time High Speed Rail was ready to begin its portion. We wanted to try and avoid having the city have a two-year project shut down for a year and then go through the misery and, and unhappiness of another two-year project. We were hoping to make this essentially one project. And we can say that it's a financial rail program because it is a project that has utility and has meaning to both Caltrain and high-speed rail. So our hope is that it will be longer than two years because high-speed rail will have made these critical decisions, provided the funding, and we'll be moving along into the next phase, as, as uh, Clara referred to it. So it means more than perhaps two years. It means uh, who knows how long it would take. I don't want to predict for high-speed rail how long it would take them to build their project. But the idea is that it would be one sort of project rather than, you know, constantly coming back and, and making a misery out of San Bruno over an extended period of time. Any other questions? I'll say one more thing, and I've said it before here at the council meeting, that the credibility of, of, of your process is really um, out in the public here now. And you've mentioned it too before, that this has to be a model for what you intend to do uh, not just at San Bruno, but up and down the peninsula. So, uh, you know, all the eyes of the peninsula are on you. And I know you have a lot of uh, other people that probably don't work as, as easily with you as San Bruno has over the last number of years. I also want to take a, a moment to uh, thank very much the Citizens Advisory Committee over the last seven to eight years, working very, very hard from a safety standpoint, which initiated this whole thing, to shovels in the ground pretty quick. So they've done one heck of a job and uh, put an awful lot of time in, and they deserve uh, uh, compliments. Thank you. If, if I could take a moment just to make a couple of observations, because this is, I, I think, an important moment to Caltrain and even a historic moment for San Bruno. Um, I, I think based on the sense we get from your staff and from the subcommittee members that we've had the privilege of meeting with, um, I, I want to say first and foremost that the responsibility for this communication and outreach program is mine. And I want to say that publicly and make sure that everybody understands I accept that responsibility. Um, and, and we're going to do our best, uh, mindful of what's happened to this community before and some of the unhappiness that's been caused maybe by other agencies and by other projects. Uh, we want to use that as a model for how to do this right and what not to do. I, 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 I do want to mention a couple of things. One is it was almost exactly a year ago that we met with uh, the, the committee of this council and your staff uh, to say that we had uh, identified $30 million in state funding that was available, we didn't think would be available. And we made what we described then as the unreasonable request to get this project designed and ready to go out to bid and ready to go out to contract in a year. Uh, we were right, it was unreasonable. Uh, not just for your staff, but for ours as well. But we did so, and it's a real achievement uh, for everybody who's worked on this, Raphael and Clara most notably that we've gotten to this point. It is um, a chance for us to expedite something that we know is an opportunity for the city uh, to really reinvent itself in ways that I know many of you have wanted to for a long time. And we're very, very supportive of that. As, as I have said many times, uh, largely to no or little effect, uh, I grew up here, this town is very important to me. Um, I can recall years ago working for a newspaper called the Enterprise Journal and writing a series of stories about how the North County always gets the short end of the stick in this county. And I know that's something that I felt when I grew up here in San Bruno. I love this town, but I felt as though everybody else seemed to go first. And San Bruno always seemed to have to be told to wait until it was their turn. Well, I can tell you, you're going first. This is $100 million of the taxpayers' money in San Mateo County we're going to spend on this great separation. This may be this may be the last one we do because there's not that much more money in this great separation program. So uh, I don't mean to say that you guys don't deserve it. I don't mean to say that we're unhappy to be doing it. We're proud of this project. We think ultimately you're going to be proud of it. Uh, but I, I'm just pleased to be able to stand here on an occasion such as this and say San Bruno gets to go first this time. So if you have questions now, if you have them later, uh, everybody knows how to get in touch with me. We're going to be available a lot. 
And so thank you for the opportunity to talk to you and for making these few remarks. Thank you very much. I, I thank you. I should have just kept my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you were hoping I you would want to get that out. Um, I, I read through this a couple of times, and the more, every time I read it, I got more and more confused. Uh, and welcome I think, to my world. <laughs> part, I think part of the, my confusion, and I, I'm hoping you can straighten me out, is that you have a scope of project, and it has main improvements, and then there's a list. And then there's another section that says op optional improvements, and then there's another list. Some of them seem to exclude each other, and some of them seem to overlap. And for example, um, main improvements, let's see. You mean like whether or not we're going to build a station? Yeah, that part. Yeah. Because yeah. Let, let me let me respond to that this way. Well, well, let me let me okay. let me just say this, and this is for the audience, the television audience as well. In the first part, it says a station that will be built on parking, and then it says optional improvements at Great Parking Lot and a new transit center, and then it it's kind of, it sounds through the rest of it as though this is going to happen, but this will only happen if we kind of all these other things happen. So it sounds almost as if if high-speed rail doesn't come or if these other things don't happen, there won't be a station. I, I realize that's not how it's intended, but that's how it reads. So I'm, I'd like some clarification well, on that. For, for the record, optional means whether we do it or whether high-speed rail does it, not whether or not it gets done. OK, that's um, not clear it, Well, to me. Well, OK, but I, I, believe, I don't believe there's any uh, equivocation in it, uh, intentional or otherwise. Okay. Let me state categorically: um, we're going to build a station in San Bruno. We okay. are, or high-speed rail is. If we build one and then high-speed rail comes, it's kind of pointless to tear it out. And, and it'd be a waste of a lot of money, especially. And then so then they, we'd have them build it because the reason we needed a station now is for high-speed rail. So they get to pay for it. They get to build it. So it's all a function of not whether or not we're going to do it, but whether we're going to do it or whether high-speed rail is going to do it. And there are a number of items that fall into that category, but none of it is meant to imply or, or infer or even state in any way that we're not going to do these things. And the station's a great example. Okay. I'm not quite sure what we'd have there in the way of picking people up if we didn't have the station. Well, that's, yes, I agree with you. The, the other confusion is if high-speed rail doesn't have to come or to start construction anywhere from eight to ten years, what's going to happen? Are well, eight to ten years is, is according to the, their EIR when they would be completing construction, not starting. Okay, through the whole. Right. What, you know, what's going to happen? I, I can't tell you what's going to happen. What do I think is going to happen? You know, it's worth about as much as the amount of money I spent on the Diet Dr. Pepper I bought before the meeting started, <laughs> or less. Um, what I can tell you is that we're working very closely with high-speed rail. Uh, we've already announced that there are four projects that would benefit Caltrain, we think qualify for high-speed rail funding. So if we get the funding for the, that from the federal government, you could argue that those projects are the first construction projects for high-speed rail on our right-of-way. And one of them is the great separation in San Bruno. The other two, three, are work in the north terminal in San Francisco, work in the south terminal, and a, a signal system called positive train control, which is, we think, going to set a national standard for how to uh, signal our trains to operate more safely. Um, but it, it's all going to be a work in progress. And I recognize that to some degree, there's going to be a level of uncertainty and even uncomfort, discomfort because of that. Um, we have done the best we can to delineate these things as completely as we can. And your staff has done a very good job of probably making us do more than we were willing to do along those lines, but that's really the nature of it. Okay. Clara? I just would like to add a uh, clarifying comment. Uh, the, in, the spirit of intent of this agreement, Councilmember uh, O'Connor, is that if after the first phase is close to uh, finalization, if the decision at that time will be that the high-speed rail, the next two tracks, will not be built in a reasonable time. And that reasonable time never was 
agree to, what that really means, two months, three months, one year, then the east side of this project will be entirely finished, including with landscape on First Avenue and everything else. Like, uh, will be entirely the east side of the project will looks like the west side of the project and will be entirely uh, finalized. Two, but only two tracks. With only two tracks, but the east side pace also uh, will have the same improvement, will have uh, the same treatment, will have uh, the same uh, landscape improvement on the east side versus how is uh, improved the project on the west side. I had two more. Well, let me just say, we'll know more in October, we'll know more a year from October, we'll know more two years from October. And this is, I think we all regard this as a, a living document. It's not something that we're all gonna say, you know, a year from October and all that's it, we're done. We'll continue to work with the city, that's our interest. It, since I'm not a member of the subcommittee, I, I sure. have to catch up on some of these things. Um, I noticed on page 10 where it talks about public outreach, and I'm sure your intention is to also do some in bilingual yes. um, outreach and Spanish and yes. whatever needs to be done in that area. Yeah, in fact, we, okay. we've already done some research along those lines in conjunction with the, uh, uh, what's the project we're working on right now? I can't forget it. Thank you, Box Culver. Um, uh, in, terms, in terms of how, we've already done outreach for that project, it's been multilingual, we actually did some research on which languages ought to be included. So, yeah, I mean, that our intention is to do this uh, well enough to satisfy you. Great, and I just one more thing. Um, on page 12, it talks about city improvements, access to right away, and it talks about you doing a free construction survey, and then, that, so that afterwards you'll be able to bring everything back up to what it was. Some of the streets in that area aren't that great at the moment, um, and partly we've deferred maintenance on some of those because we knew the construction was coming through. So if you do the survey now and try to bring back the potholes, um, is there is there a way we could, you know, bring it up to a standard or bring it up to something, or cooperate with the city and maybe, you know. In, do something jointly that you guys don't do something and then we come back and have to rip it up and do something else? Um, I, I think that's, I think that's, if not the spirit of the agreement, then almost the language of the agreement. That we require city sign off on some of these matters before yeah. we can say we're completed with them. Oh, sorry. My mic was oh. off, sorry. <laughs> oh my okay. God, I, thank God I thought I was losing my hearing. Um, those, were, those were my main concerns. Yeah, I, I think I can state without fear of being wrong, we're not going to put the potholes back. Thank you very much. Um, we know we have to repave the streets. We're going to have to lower them a little bit. And part of our plan is to pave those streets over once we're done lowering. So they'll end up being repaved. Uh, it's not our interest. In, it's not here. We just don't want to do that. I guess I should. We, we've been burned before. Well, this is why I'm. Yeah, and I understand that. And, and I, I recognize that. We have to live up to those standards. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Vice Mayor? Yeah, very quick. <clears throat> I think uh, my colleagues have addressed most of the issues. Uh, I appreciate before the meeting taking some questions of emails that I've received. Um, and I appreciate the residents who have uh, keep their interest and keeping their eye on the project as well. You know, I've gone down there as there's some initial work on part of First Avenue has been done and talking to some of the folks and uh, just seeing how it's been as far as the noise, as far as the construction. Uh, and before tonight's meeting, I went down there again just to walk along and try to visualize what this project can mean to this community. What monumental task it will be in an undertaking, new grounds that you're walking on, and hopefully a beautiful uh, end result as you spoke of. Um, I do have concerns for the uh, safety of the youth during this construction and the project and that adequate precautions are taken, notifications, signs, uh, fencing, et cetera. Um, I'd like to know that when it's all done as far as uh, graffiti resistant uh, paint or to the walls, the vegetation, it's maintained and it's, and it's kept up. So the appearance and the gateway to this community uh, 
is what it's supposed to be like. You mentioned earlier that, as you know, living here before, is that uh, it is perceived to be the short end of the stick. I learned that when I was at Cappuccino High School. It was always perceived that way, and I've heard it needless times since then. I think it is your ability, because it will be, as the mayor said, a model that the whole county and other communities will watch to see the cooperative effort that can or won't take place and what they have to look forward to potentially down the road. And I think you have the opportunity to help maybe change those views of many of our residents that feel we've gotten the, the short end. And this project has waited a long time and a lot of people uh, obviously have lost lives in the process, uh, young people and others who are crossing at various locations. This could have a tremendous impact and positive uh, to our community. And I'm hoping that you engage yourself and continue to meet and defer with the staff uh, so that we are working as a team, that you are available, and that we address the needs and, and the concerns of the residents. Um, actions speak louder than words, and this project will obviously be your opportunity to, to lead by example and, and show us what you can do. Yes, sir. Okay. Anyone else? Action? Good answer. Well, I, I'll, I'll, I'll take the honors. It is, it is historic. And Mark, thank you, and pass on our thanks to, uh, to uh, Mike Scanlon. Uh, it's been eight years. And again, I'd like to also reiterate the thanks to the, uh, to the representatives of our uh, community, our citizens. What, what was that committee again? <laughs> For four or five years, three years that we had them. Uh, about 17, 17 residents and uh, uh, really outspoken people who went through and actually learned how to become engineers, uh, railroad engineers, and got to really understand what, uh, what the undertaking was. And our credibility is here to, to be able to give that project you know, to that committee and to the community as, as we envisioned it over those few years. And I can't think of anything that's more important, you know, for this community. And it started with safety. It started with some deaths. And so uh, we're going to take care of that, and plus we're going to improve the community. And with that, I'll be very honored and proud to introduce the resolution accepting uh, this, uh, this agreement. Councilmember Ibera. Aye. Councilmember Salazar. Aye. Councilmember O'Connell. Aye. Vice Mayor Medina. Aye. Mayor Ruane. Aye. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much.